Could you laughing at me? I'll crack you yet. Yeah! <laughs> Take that! <laughs> what is that you've got in your hand, Belfry? Not that and the other one. You've got a piece of cheese, haven't you? It's mine! Where did you get the cheese, Belfry? I found it. Oh, found it, eh? Oh, but Theo gave it to you and told you to share it with me, didn't he? No, he didn't. He only suggested that I... Oh, so Theo did give you the cheese. Huh? <laughs> Hey, what's that? What? Huh? Hey, give me back my cheese! <laughs> Possession is nine-tenths of the law! Yeah, well, I'm gonna give you nine-tenths of a knuckle sandwich! <laughs> give me back my cheese! Well, I don't see your name on it! <laughs> <laughs> It takes a while for fruit to ripen. We mustn't rush it. Oh. Ah, what a lovely day. So quiet, so peaceful. Wouldn't you agree, Bumper? Give me back oh. my cheese, you stealer! <laughs> Find his keepers, use his weepers. I'm telling My, 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 such selfishness, such greed and strife. Bumper, you have just witnessed what the Bible calls the works of the flesh. We've all behaved like Luther and Belfry at one time or another, haven't we? That's because we're sinners. We each have a sinful nature that is selfish and not pleasing to God. Ever take the last cookie knowing that someone else wanted it too? Ever see something that belonged to someone else and you wanted it so bad that you took it? Ever own something that made you think you were better than others? These are examples of the works of the flesh. There are others as well. Selfish anger, impure thoughts and acts, greed and gluttony. Sadly, the list goes on. The Bible says that Christians should live in the spirit so that they will not do the works of the flesh. Living in the spirit is simply trusting God for everything in our lives. When we walk in the Spirit, God produces the fruit of the Spirit in us. Let's take a look at the fruit of the Spirit in our shoebox Bible theater. When the Apostle Paul described the works of the sin nature in the book of Galatians, he said that they were obvious. Paul cited a few more examples, such as thefts, jealousies, immorality, idolatry, fits of rage, selfish ambition, drunkenness. Without a radical change to that nature, humans would be hopelessly separated from God. 
But thanks be to God that through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, believers in Jesus have been set free from the power and control of the sinful nature and have been given new life. As believers walk in the Spirit of God, the Spirit produces godly fruit in them. Fruit such as love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The more we allow the Holy Spirit to grow this fruit in us, the more we will look like Jesus. The love that Paul speaks about is God's love. It is a self-sacrificing love, a love that puts others first. A love that recognizes that because God loves us, we will love others. It is a love not motivated by feelings, but by an act of the will. People sometimes confuse joy with happiness. Happiness has to do with how we feel when things are going well. Biblical joy is produced by the Spirit of God in us. Joy is the inner knowledge and belief that God is in control of our circumstances and means them for our good, no matter how unpleasant or painful they might be. People often think of peace as the absence of war or strife between people or nations. Biblical peace goes far beyond this idea. It brings people who were once enemies together in loving fellowship, just like our relationship with God. We were once enemies, but now through Jesus, the Prince of Peace, we have peace with God. People who were once enemies are now friends in true spirit-produced peace. Because God is patient with us, we are to allow the Holy Spirit to grow this fruit in us. When those around us are difficult, we are to be patient even with those who provoke us. We are to bless those who mistreat us and not curse them. Kindness seeks to do kind acts to someone, even as God has been kind to us. It is being favorably disposed towards someone, wanting their good and opening the door for goodness to enter. Goodness. Goodness is an action word. It is going out of one's way to do good to someone, even when that person doesn't deserve it. It is kindness in work boots. Faithfulness describes a person who is trustworthy and reliable, even when his master isn't looking. It is the faithful servant who consistently does what his master asks. Gentleness is strength under control, like a powerful stallion that has been trained. It is a humble spirit before God and man, a spirit that is teachable, yet one that is able to teach, to discipline, even rebuke when necessary. Self-control describes someone who has victory over the desires of the flesh. He is able to live in the world with all of its evil desires and yet remain unpolluted by it. He is in control of his thoughts, words, and deeds. So you see, the more the fruit of the Spirit grows in us, the more we look like Jesus. Give it back! Wait, it's mine! Wait till I get my paws on you! Mine. Hey, slow down! I'm gonna get that cheese and then I'm gonna get you! Mine, mine. Um, you're going to! Mine, mine. Get 
it wet. Take this. Why don't you lads share the cheese? That way you'll both enjoy it. <laughs> After all, it is more blessed to give than receive. Ah, uh, sure. Whatever you say, Theo. If you will k k kindly wind up the bucket. Lutha, I want you to have my cheese. No more works of that flash for me. No, it's yours, Belfry. My fruit of kindness wants you to have it. But my fruit of joy is giving it back to you. Here! Oh, my fruit of patience really insists that you take it. Here! How would you like five knuckles of faithfulness after I give you a wedgie?